In this presentation, we'll take a quick tour through the administration of the Dynamic Web CMS. Having the website URL, we'll add a slash admin, which then will present us with the login screen to the administration. There are two key login names that are default in Dynamic Web, that is administrator and admin. Admin is used for the actual content management and will not have access to important system settings. For the Visal system settings, you'll want to use the administrator login who has full access to all settings. So I'll apply the administrator username and the password that goes along with it. Having logged in, you'll be presented to a main screen to the right and a panel navigation bar to the left. The navigation will reveal the buttons Home, Content, Files, Users, E-commerce, PIM, Marketing and Apps, and at the very bottom you'll find the Settings button. Depending on the permissions of the user who has logged in, there may be some of the buttons in the panel that do not appear, but as administrator we'll see all of them. Initially, when on the Home section, you'll be presented with an overview made out of widgets. The widgets can be edited and exchanged so that you will see the widgets showing information that is relevant to you as the currently logged in user. One user may be using PIM to maintain products and would like to see product information, and another user has his or her focus on the contents and would like to see information about pages, paragraphs and images. Moving on to the contents, you will find pages and paragraphs. These can be ordinary pages and paragraphs, but they can also be of type item or document type as other CMSs call it, where you define your page and paragraph explicitly. But we'll get back to the details on that later on. Clicking the Files button, you'll find the Files Archive. This will contain all the website-specific files needed for the website, all the HTML files, Razor templates, CSS files, images, and perhaps if you have some PDFs for download. Continuing to the User section, we find the location of users and user groups. These can be both users for the administration, users who log in via the front ends, and newsletter recipients. You may have as many user groups as you like, and you may have them nested in any number of levels that you see fit. Smart searches and repository queries we'll get around to later on. Moving on to the e-commerce, we find the most common information related to the product base. We find the products themselves, and we find the orders. And besides these two points, there are a number of other sub points and these will be covered in another presentation. Unfolding the product catalog will reveal the product groups and the products contained within them. Entering a product will reveal the specific product info, and yet a number of choices are available from the top bar. Going back to the order section, we'll find both completed orders and cards. Entering an order will provide us with the order header and the order lines. This brings us to PIM, also known as Product Information Management. This is used for enriching your products with information for each channel in which the products are being displayed. One channel could be your website, of course, and another channel could be a catalog that you have for print. So the Product Information Management helps you to keep track of what needs to be updated, including a lot of helpful tools and customizable overviews to overcome that process with the least efforts. Next up is marketing section. The two most important sub points here are the email marketing and the personalization. Email marketing works together with the users section, picking users and groups for email marketing campaigns. Personalization is used for personalizing the content, both for emails and for pages and paragraphs. An example could be to produce an email for marketing that is sent to all users who have bought a specific product within the last 14 days. Moving on to the apps. This is a brief list of default apps in Dynamic Web. The number of apps will depend on the licensing model that you have. Also, you may build your own apps and have them appear alongside the default apps. An example of an app could be the Forms app that we have right here, that you would use for designing forms for the front end user to submit. Last but not least, we have the Settings button. This will reveal a quite extensive list with a fairly large number of sublists, indicating that you're working with a CMS with a lot of functionality and settings. What you find under the settings is meant for the administrator, the implementer of the website. This is where you'll deal with 
host headers, customized URLs, languages, currencies, payment gateways, shipping providers, built-in editors, and so forth. So it is not for everyday use, but usually settings that are relatively static once you have set them. And so we have reached the end of this presentation. Thank you for watching.